It stands for depth of field. It's another control you have in photography. Here you have a very shallow depth of field, which is excellent if you're shooting people to separate them from the background. Here you have the same scene, but with a greater depth of field. This is excellent, of course, when you require more depth of field. You control the depth of field with the aperture of your lens. A wide open lens will give you less depth of field. A lens that's all closed down will give you greater depth of field. It is really that simple. This is the lens that I used to make this video today. Some of my old Navy buddies from back in the 60s might even recognize this lens. Back then I would walk around with a Pentax camera and I would use the super multi-coated Tacumar 135mm lens a lot. Today I used it in making this video. Back then we had many ways to control our photographs. Composition of course. The way we would focus would be a control. We would also have an ASA which I'll explain later and then of course we would have shutter speed and then aperture. Aperture was perhaps one of the most creative ways to control your photograph. There were so many things to think about back then that manufacturers did everything they could to help us in every way they could. This is a depth of field scale for example. Here it suggests that I'm shooting the picture at f16 but if you'll notice that little red mark right there it'll also tell you that everything within the 10 meter to 30 meter range would be in sharp focus. And that's how we would tell many times. That's the only way we had of knowing. In other words, if you look to the right of the red mark and to the left of the red mark and you look at F16, then what you find is any th everything between say 40 feet and say 90 feet would be in focus or within 10 meters and 30 meters would be in focus. This all glass 135 millimeter Tacumar lens is really a fine lens. That's the lens I used to shoot this entire video except for the illustrations that were shown on the different lens apertures earlier. Okay on we go. I also promised that I would tell you about ASA. ASA had to do with the t sensitivity of the film. ASA, American Standard Association, had to do with the sensitivity of the film. Camera manufacturers were always overly ambitious, of course, and on the cameras they would list ASA from, say, 1600 to 16. In fact, you can only buy films, as a rule, between 32 and 400. The smaller the number would indicate the finer the grain. The higher the number would indicate the larger the grain or the more sensitive the film was to light. Did you get that? <laughs> okay, let me, let, let, let me put it another way. Um, back then when we used film, especially black and white film, it was all a matter of silver halides being suspended in gelatin. The smaller the silver halides, of course, the less sensitive they were to light and the smaller the ASA. The larger the silver halides, little bits of silver, in the negative film, the more sensitive that particular film was to light. So, when we speak of sensitivity, ASA is to film as ISO is to the modern camera. ISO, as you know, actually means International Organization of Standardization so that everybody would play on the same field. So there's just one rule for ISO all over the world. Now ISO varies, of course, according to the type of camera that you have. But it is a factor, a very important factor in shooting pictures, and I'll tell you why. Remember earlier I told you that with the 135mm Tacumar lens that was used to shoot this video, 
I had to handle it all with manual focusing, manual apertures. However, the camera would automatically compensate for exposure using the ISO. It would either lessen the ISO or make the ISO greater to compensate for the aperture. In other words, it would compensate for whether or not I would close the lens or open the lens. Now you can see why it's so important to have a camera with a wide range of ISO. That is the capabilities of having a wide range of ISO. By the way, I really enjoyed making this video and I really enjoyed explaining depth of field to the best of my ability. It was not perfect, of course. There are other ways that it could have been done that would have been better, I'm sure. But I did my best. And I also want to remind you that I respond to feedback. So if there's a question, if there's something that you'd like me to explain in my own way, I would be happy to do that. I might even make a video. And since I work on donations, Canon, if you wish to donate a new camera, say the T4i, I'd be glad to accept it. Or maybe a camera store want to do that. In the meantime, I'm a little parched, so I'm going to get an adult beverage while you enjoy the rest of this video. Thank you very much. Until next time.